Uh, I want to spend a few minutes just having a look at uh, 3D representations of uh, organic compounds. Now, like it or not, in organic chemistry, carbon is tetrahedral, and because of that, there's a three-dimensional shape to, uh, to all uh, organic compounds. And so we need to be able to learn uh, the methods that organic chemists use in order to represent the three dimensions of molecules. Uh, I've got a very simple uh, molecule here of ethane, um, and it's not a terribly exciting molecule, um, but even just in a simplicity with two carbon atoms, there's a three-dimensional shape to this molecule which um, <clears throat> we need to be able to uh, appreciate. Now, when we draw something like this out on a, on a piece of paper, this one's very boring, it's just a single line, um, because at each end we've got the, the, the CH3 uh, uh, atoms. And so, um, it looks very simple over there, but as you can see in, in three dimensions, it's a little bit more complicated. Now, there are two uh, types of conformational drawings, um, which we, uh, we use that word, conformation, to, to show the shape, the three-dimensional shape of the molecule. There are two types of drawings that we need to learn. Uh, the one is the sawhorse uh, projection, right there, sawhorse, and the other one is a Newman projection. Um, and both of these are actually going to be very important in terms of being able to represent three-dimensional structures of organic compounds. Now the sawhorse projection is actually just looks very much like the structure that we have here. Uh, and what we can do with the sawhorse projection is we look at this molecule just as we has, have it over here and all we do is we put um, uh, four of the atoms, in this case the hydrogen, the carbon, this carbon and this carbon, all in the plane. In other words, it's in the plane of the paper that we draw. Um, when we look at that, we can see that there's one hydrogen going to the back over there and one hydrogen coming forward and another one going uh, to coming forward over here and then another one going back over there. So as we look at this, if we look at this diagram over here, if we draw out the sawhorse, it's going to look like something like this. We've got the straight line with the two carbons and we've got the hydrogens over there. So we've got a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and now we need to draw in the other two hydrogens. The difficulty with this, as I pointed out in another video of mine, is that this hydrogen that's coming forward over here and the hydrogen that's going back over there are eclipsed by each other, or at least they, we can't see them because the one is directly in front, direct, directly behind. And so we have to cheat a little bit in the source projection um, in that we're going to have to show the one hydrogen with a wedge coming forward like that and the other one going towards the back. And we're going to kind of put it slightly skewed when we draw that. And likewise with the other one, we're going to have a hydrogen coming forward and a hydrogen going back and it will look something like that. So <clears throat> the sawhorse projection, for all intents and purposes, is very much like our line diagrams that we have been drawing um, uh, so far. The only difference is being is that we, we kind of put this line flat. We don't have the zigzag in the plane of the paper, a little bit skewer, um, but it's going straight across uh, like that over there. Um, this one shouldn't be too hard for you to actually see and when you see pictures of sawhorse projections you shouldn't have trouble with this. It's the Newman projection which is actually quite important um, but it is a little bit more difficult to see. The reason it is important is that the Newman projection is looking down this bond over here. So we're going to turn this around and if we look down that bond um, as I've shown it over there what we're seeing is the two carbons on top of each other. And what we're looking, looking at are the three hydrogens that are towards us on this carbon over here and we see the three hydrogens behind over there um, which are on the other carbon over there. Now just before I draw the Newman projection let's just look at um, ethane itself uh, and look at the way that I've, I've drawn that. Um, the first thing is that or the way that I've represented it over here you can see that the hydrogen that's in the front over here pointing directly up is directly opposite, or the word we use is anti-periplanar, to the hydrogen that I've put behind over there. Now, I'm going to turn it around again over here. This bond over here is a sigma bond. There is effectively free rotation around this bond over here. So, if we look in this projection, which we're going to learn how to draw just now, the Newman projection, what we're saying is that this whole front part can turn round and round and round freely. So, well, 
the answer is that it's actually not as free in terms of the rotation as we've said and said to you beforehand. There is a barrier, an energetic barrier, in the way that it turns. And it best can be represented if I turn it like this, and what you can see now is that the hydrogens in the front are eclipsing, they are covering the hydrogens at the back. All right. If I turn it another 60 degrees, I'm going to get to this kind of position over here where the hydrogen in the front is as far away from the two hydrogens at the back as possible. And this we could say is a, a staggered um, uh, arrangement. And, and these are the two extreme confirmations that uh, ethane and in all uh, sp3 carbon centers, and I'll give you another example just now, um, can uh, adopt. The one is a high energy eclipsed confirmation. This is high energy because this hydrogen over there is directly behind that hydrogen over there and they're going, even though hydrogen is small, they're going to be bumping into each other. Um, but if we do turn it like this, <coughs> this uh, hydrogen over here is now not bumping into any hydrogens at the back. Likewise, this hydrogen at the back there is not bumping into hydrogens in the front. And all of the hydrogens, if we look at it, are bisecting the ones um, in the front or the back, depending on which one we're looking at. So that's the one thing that, that makes this more stable. The other thing that makes it more stable, a little bit more difficult to, um, to explain, but remember that this sigma bond, the carbon sigma bond over there, also has an antibonding orbital, um, which is in the same direction as this. So there is the bonding orbital over there. The antibonding orbital has a node which is over here and another lobe that is at the back over here, pointing directly behind it. Now, this antibonding orbital, which is empty, um, experiences some stabilization from this bonding orbital that is directly behind. They can slightly, in a sense, overlap. Uh, and, and because of that, when these align, in other words, they are anti-periplanar, this one is in front over there, this one comes down over there. Uh, when they're anti-periplanar, there is a stabilization. Uh, it's called hyperconjugation, and it's because the antibonding orbital that is over here can align with this one over here. Likewise, behind us, this one's antibonding orbital, which you can't see, it's behind over there, all right, is going to be, is going to be uh, uh, in this direction over there, and it's going to be aligned to this uh, a sigma bond over there. So the sigma star of this bond is going to overlap with the sigma of this carbon hydrogen bond. All right, so it adds an extra stability to it. All right, so this is the preferred confirmation for the reasons I've said to you. There's steric argument, which is the hydrogens are as far away from each other as possible, and there's an electronic argument, which is to do with hyperconjugation. So how do we draw this in a new projection? If we're looking down these two atoms, well, if we look straight down, what we are seeing, let's put it on the side here, what we are seeing in the front is a hydrogen pointing up like that, and like that, and like that. Approximately, this is, as we're looking at it, 120 degree bond angles, all right? Because it's like a perfect triangle as we look down this uh, tetrahedral carbon from that angle. So we're going to have a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. Now, the carbon that's at the back, um, as you can see, it's basically just a little point as well. The front one we did, it, so the other carbon that's behind is going to also um, be uh, directly behind. And the problem is, is if, if I just draw now the hydrogens going out, right, these back ones, um, it's going to be very difficult to see which hydrogens are at the back and which in the front. So what we do is we, we make the carbon that's at the back, we, we make it bigger. So we just put a little circle there, all right, and that circle represents the carbon at the back. This little point over here is the carbon at the front, and the one at the back is the, or the circle at least, is the carbon at the back. So now we put our hydrogens onto there, and this is the Newman projection of um, uh, this ethane molecule. So now just to complete our understanding of what I just said, uh, said to you, let's just look at, at butane. So butane is a little bit more complex, obviously it's ethane, so we would just normally draw it as a zigzag uh, like that. Um, so it looks very simple when we draw it on a flat piece of paper like that, but of course butane is a lot more complicated. Um, even with just only four carbons, they're all tetrahedral, and so there is a three-dimensional shape to it. Now butane can adopt many different conformations. All these sigma bonds 
can turn around and swing around in a lot of different ways. Um, but it turns out that the lowest energy is the one where we are going to be, um, all the uh, uh, bonds are uh, staggered as we saw uh, previously. So we start looking down the one bond over there and what we want to do is we want to get that staggered so we stagger it like that. So what we have now is um, all the atoms are intersecting each other and they're staggered. So now I'm look down the next uh, set of bonds and that's that one over there and we want to stagger all these but now look at this we've got a methyl group at the front there and we've got a methyl group at the back there and they are very close to each other that's not ideal what we want to do is we want to get them as far away from each other as possible so by doing it this way all right we now have this front methyl group is as far away from this back methyl group as possible uh, and we look down the last set of bonds to be that last methyl group and we're going to stagger them like that. When we look at it from the side we see the zigzag pattern which we always draw uh, out and that's one of the reasons why we get that, that zigzag pattern. Um, but let's just go back to looking at the uh, um, what draw, how we would draw a Newman projection down this carbon and this carbon over here. If we number it, this is carbon 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we're going to look down the C2 and C3 bond over here. So we're going to look down that. So we want to look down and we're going to stick our, our eye. Alright, we're going to stick our eye um, looking down this bond over here. So in order to do that, we're going to stick our eye right over there. So we're going to be turning it and we're going to look like there. Sorry for the bump. Alright, so we're going to look at it like that. So when we look at it like that, what, what we're looking at is we're looking at this is the front carbon and the back carbon is hidden behind over there. We're now going to draw the Newman projection of that. So I'm going to do it on the side. And so what we're seeing is we've got the front carbon, which is this little dot over there. We've got this methyl group coming straight down. So that's CH3. And we have two hydrogens going out like that. And so that's that forward carbon. Then we're going to do the carbon at the back, which we need to draw a circle for. All right. And the carbon that's <clears throat> at the back, let me just try and hold it a bit better there. Um, the carbon that's at the back over there, we have this methyl group going straight up. It's anti-periplanar to this methyl group over there. So CH3 and the two hydrogens are going to be um, over there and look something like that. And so lastly, I just want to show you um, how we would draw Newman projections of something that's a little bit more complicated than uh, butane. Um, and for this, I've chosen a molecule of bromobutane, 2-bromobutane. And as you can see, um, because uh, this carbon over here has four different groups uh, associated with it, it's actually a chiral carbon. And so we need to know how to draw the Newman projection in such a way as to preserve and make sure that we are drawing it with this correct chirality. So I've done the 3D model. Obviously, you're not going to have a 3D model every time that you want to um, uh, draw these structures out. So we have to learn how to translate the flat structure that are drawn over here into the Newman projection. But just to show you the model, this is what we're going to, uh, to look at. Um, I'm going to ask you to draw the Newman projection looking down, as we did before, the C2, I'm looking down this, the C2, C3 bond over there. So we're going to be drawing that one um, out and we need to learn how to do that. So there's the three-dimensional model that I've drawn over here. The bromine is coming, coming up towards us over there. See there's a hydrogen going towards the back. <clears throat> and so this is the, the structure that we are, uh, are looking at. So the Newman projection is going to, we're going to turn it, if we're looking down this bond over here, that's C2, C3, the C2 comes in front of us like that, and that is the Newman projection that we are going to be uh, going to be drawing out, all right? It's going to look something like that. Um, but we need to be able to do this without, as I say, using, uh, using models. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this model away, and I'm going to, uh, uh, you can, try and draw it using this model over here, but I want us to show how we're going to do this looking at the flat structure that I've drawn over there. Okay, so the first thing is to remember that when we draw out our Newman projections, this um, uh, line diagrams that we use 
are already effectively in the saw horse projection and they are staggered. It's part of the way, that's why we draw the zigzags and that's the way we do it. So they're already in a staggered form and so when we draw our Newman projections uh, we can always use the same um, uh, thing. <clears throat> All we need to do is we need to realize that the Newman projection, when we look down the Newman projection, so let me just bring this model back just to help you. When we look down this carbon over here, when we're looking down that bond over there, this line that is in the plane of the paper, just follow us, is carbon 1, 2, 3, and 4. This line that is there, and we're looking down 2 and 3. This line in the flat of the paper, in the Newman projection, when we turn it round like that, this over here where my pencil is, was the plane of the paper. Okay, just watch that again. This is an important thing to, to note. There's the line that we've drawn over there that's in the plane of the paper so when we turn it round like that and we look at the Newman projection this over here is the plane of the paper this methyl here this carbon the carbon behind and that methyl group over there are the plane of the paper all right so we take this away over there so <clears throat> when we draw our Newman projection we're going to start with the carbon in the front we're going to go straight down because as we look at this over here, we put our eye over here, this methyl group that's in the plane of the paper is going down relative to our eye. If we put our face over there, this is going down. So there's the CH3. So the other two groups must be somewhere on those two. We're going to come to that now. All right. There's two other groups. There's the hydrogen and a bromine on one of those two um, positions. And then behind us, all right, there's the carbon that's behind. Behind us, you can see there's that methyl group. We're looking down. There's carbon 2, carbon 3. Carbon 2 is this dot here. There's carbon 1, 2. The circle is carbon 3. Carbon 4 is connected to carbon 3, and it's going straight up. As we look at that, that's the plane of the paper. It's going straight down, and this is going straight up. All right. So that's the CH3 over there. And, of course, there are two other groups. They, but this is easy because those two are just hydrogen, so we can just put them in already. The hard part over here, doing it properly, is to connect which one of these is um, the bromine and which one is the hydrogen. And um, that's, that's the hard part. But it isn't too hard. All you need to do, and it's going to involve some spatial um, things and thinking, is remember that this zigzag over here is the plane of the paper. When we look down that bond over there, what we've done is we've twisted it like that. All right? I've taken, as my hand is the, the zigzag, We've twisted and we've looked at it like that. So that means that everything above the plane of this paper is going to be on the right-hand side. In other words, there's the plane of the paper that's running straight down over there. Everything on this side over here is the top, as we've drawn it over here, and everything on the other side is the bottom. And hopefully for you, it's not too hard to see that, well, the bromine is up, it's on the top, this side is the top, so the bromine must go there, and the hydrogen is pointing down, which is on the bottom, so it must be there. That is our now perfectly drawn Newman projection based on this structure that we have over there. All right. Um, at this stage of the course, um, I can't explain to you why it is important that you're able to draw out uh, Newman projections like this. Um, you're going to learn a little bit later that this is going to help you immensely in order to solve uh, some stereochemical problems uh, later on when you do elimination reactions. All right, so you're going to need to practice this. Um, doing this a few times, you'll get used to this and you will uh, find that it's actually uh, not that hard.